Hey guys, welcome back. So today I brought home this ETQ generator. This was a Facebook find. It was listed at $135. And according to the listing, this engine runs, the generator makes power, but there is fuel leaking from the airbox when the engine's running. Now, that's a little bit odd because if the needle and seat were bad, it would be leaking when the engine's off as well. But right now I do have the fuel valve on, it's been on for some time, and there is nothing coming out of there. So potentially it was just a piece of debris that's already cleared, or maybe there's a bigger issue going on. So let me get you set up a little bit better and get going on this. The tank looks to be in pretty good shape. Uh, the fuel, not so much. It does smell a little bit past its prime and the color isn't great either. So that does need to be swapped out. I did put some cardboard here just in case. I'm a little suspicious of what might be in this engine because if the needle and seat weren't working, the block could have filled with gas, diluting that oil. And that would definitely cause gas and oil to come out of the airbox when the engine's running. But in this case, it seems to be just oil, maybe a little bit low, fairly clean, but that I don't think's the issue. Let me just top that off a bit. That wasn't that low. I also noticed there's a red bracket right here. It's connected to the block and also to the frame. So I don't think that is factory because that's gonna defeat the purpose of these insulators. The engine and the stator should be floating on these insulators to minimize vibration. So that does need to be removed, but we'll leave it for now. Let's just get it started and see if we can reproduce the issue. Well, not every generator has to be a basket case, and I would say this one is far from it. The engine did start after a couple pulls, and I was able to turn the choke off. Granted, the engine it was not happy about it, but it did stay running, and the generator makes power. We were at 120 volts, 61 hertz. So overall, not too bad. Really, I think we're just dealing with a dirty carb and some old fuel. So let's get the carb off, we'll get it cleaned up, get that old fuel out, get some fresh stuff in, and we'll bring it outside and do some load testing. Just wanna take a peek in the bowl and see what we have in here. Doesn't look too bad. There's no water and no debris.
don't think this one's going to be too bad based on how good the fuel looked when I drained the bowl, not to mention the generator runs. Yeah, it looks pretty much spotless in here. So the fact that it was running bad, I mean, it could still be a piece of junk in here. Um, we know that the needle and seat at one point weren't playing nice, but, you know, the running lean may not be the carb. It could be the fact that the fuel is old and the air box and the air filter were not installed. You know, regardless, we've got it off. So let's clean it up. This is the idle set screw. And below that is the pilot jet. If anything, that could be a bit clogged. That would definitely cause the engine to surge. Uh, but if the main jet's clear, the engine will still run. The main jet's just in the center. And that's the emulsion tube. And that is pretty much it. This here, it is not removable. On some, it is an adjustable needle. Uh, but this one, it looks like they set it and just broke it off. So let's just run through all the holes, make sure they're clear, and drop this in the ultrasonic for a bit. Pilot jet might be clogged. It's really hard to tell because that hole is tiny, but if you shine it bright enough light in through the side, you should be able to see a sliver of light right up the center, and I'm not seeing that. If it was clogged, it was just barely. This wire from a wire brush went through quite easily. The needle doesn't look that bad. I'm not seeing any debris on it. You know, I can see though a line running all the way around and that's where the needle contacts the seat. You know, over time that can kind of flatten out and become uneven and cause it to leak. But this one I think is okay. So I'm actually gonna reinstall this. I wanna do a quick pressure test and see where we're at. All right, let's give this a try. This carburetor, it's not gonna see too much pressure on that needle and seat. This is gravity fed, and we're talking less than a PSI. But let's pump it up to five PSI and see if it holds. And we're right at five. And it's holding just fine. Let's try bringing it up a little more. That's pretty good. We're at nine PSI. And usually these carbs cannot hold nine. So this carb, it's doing really well. I'd say this needle and seat, there's nothing wrong with it.
Yeah, I knew this day would come. This has been sounding sick for a while. I'm not really sure what this code is, E02, and sometimes it says E01. And I just checked the manual, it doesn't mention anything about that, but the heating element won't stay on, and the transducer, it's not really sounding very healthy, so yeah. Anyway, I did buy a new one a few months ago, anticipating that this one was finally gonna die, and I think this might be it for this little one. I've gotta say, this carb, it looked clean before I cleaned it, and it looks just as clean. So I would say definitely the pilot jet was the only thing in here that could have been causing that run issue. The idle set screw, only drive it in till a few threads poke through. This generator doesn't idle, and if you drive it in too far, the engine might run too fast. And that's it. I'm just going to get the fuel out before reconnecting that carburetor. I think the guy was right when he said it had a fuel leak, but it wasn't the carburetor. If you look on the bottom of the tank right here, it is wet, as well as these threads going down to the fuel petcock. And initially I thought maybe the petcock was loose. You know, this nut sometimes works its way out a bit, uh, but that's not the case. This is tightened securely. I think the issue is actually the tank. And despite the fact that the tank is rust free, I think this is a manufacturing error because this threaded portion is actually welded into the tank and you can see a big blob of weld right there. So I think someone didn't do a very good job and unfortunately, I think this tank is the issue. So when it's done draining, I'm gonna uninstall the tank. We'll take a closer look, but I think that tank has to be replaced. Yeah, I would say the failure here is with the weld. Not a big failure. I mean, the hole must be absolutely microscopic, but yeah, I can't use that tank in this condition. You know, as far as repairing it goes, I mean, this tank, it's full of fuel vapor. Welding it really isn't an option. You know, it's not to say I couldn't fill it with water, maybe hook up some sort of a fan to keep air passing through here to minimize the chance of an explosion, but it's not really worth it in this case. These Honda clone tanks that are on eBay, they are dirt cheap. I think they're about 40 
dollars each. And in my case, I actually have an extra tank from a Predator generator that I think will just drop in place. So let's give that a try. This tank, it's a perfect match. The bolt holes all line up. It's a four gallon Honda clone tank, just like the tank that came out of there. So I'm gonna get this bolted in place. I think we'll be fine. You know, even the sticker on the side here matches what the generator is. It is 4,000 peak watts. I think the only sign that this tank doesn't belong is the fact that it says Predator on the side. Need to install some new tubing that runs from the tank down to the air box. The one that came on the blue tank, it's a larger inner and outer diameter and just isn't going to work. You know, this stuff I think should be fine. Yeah, I'm not really sure what to think about these other than I had assumed someone put these on and that they were not factory, but that's not the case. These were attached using hardware that matches the hardware that holds the engine to the insulators. And this bolt here was attaching these brackets to the frame, one on each side. 
And I was expecting to see a crudely drilled hole. Instead, I see a nut welded to the frame and painted black. So these, they were installed from the factory. And my best guess would be to protect the insulators during shipping. But I do have the manual for this generator. It came with it. And the assembly instructions mention nothing about them. It's not in the parts diagram. And it's not even in the pictures of this generator in that manual. So yeah, not sure what these are about, but all I know is these will defeat the purpose of the insulators 100%. You know, I've never seen that before. So they've been removed. Maybe if one of you guys know what these are, you could let me know, but they are serving no purpose. Before I load test this, I'm going to pull the end cover off and pull the brushes off. I recently had two ETQ generators that had stopped making power due to issues with the slip rings and the brushes. And although this one makes power, I'm curious to see what the wear looks like on this one. The brushes, they seem to be in good condition. The slip rings don't look too bad. I'm just gonna rotate the engine. I've got the spark plug wire removed. And the slip rings themselves, I don't see any issues with how they were machined. But if you look at the carbon path that the brushes left, you can tell the alignment is off and it's riding the edge of the slip ring toward the engine side of things. And that can eventually cause a brush failure, but because it's on the engine side, we can correct that just by adding a couple washers to the brush holder to kind of move the brushes closer to the center. The brushes, they're only held in place by a bolt on the left side and on the right is a locating pin. But if you add a washer, or a couple washers between the end housing and the brush assembly, you can adjust the alignment of the brushes, bringing them a little closer to that end housing. So in this case, I'll try one washer. You don't want to get too carried away because if you add too many washers, it's not going to lock in to that locating pin. I pulled off the AVR just so I could stick the camera in there and try to show you the alignment. And as you can see, it has shifted a bit. So I think we're good.
Well, the engine ran very well. The surging is gone. Of course, the tank is doing what it should. So I think I can safely cross engine and fuel issues off the list. But the voltage is another story. We started at 121 volts, loaded it to half load at 1500 watts, and the voltage dropped by five volts, bringing it down to 116 volts. I then doubled the load to 3000 watts, and the voltage came down again by five volts, bringing it to 111 volts, and that is too low. Generally, I like keeping these between 127 volts and 113 volts. So I'm gonna pop that AVR back off, adjust that potentiometer a bit, and bring that no load voltage up closer to 125 volts. This potentiometer is the adjustment for the voltage. Usually it's clockwise to bring the voltage up. So I'm gonna start with the half turn and see what that gets us. Well guys, that's pretty much it. I went into this assuming it was gonna be a carb issue and it turned out to be a quality control issue with the original tank. So the Predator tank, it's doing a good job. Had to clean that carb anyway to get rid of the surge. And now things are running pretty well. The AVR, it's not ideal the way that it's working. Ideally, it would keep the voltage right at 120 volts regardless of load, but Sometimes I don't see that. And a generator like this, this is a very inexpensive generator. I think brand new, it's about $300. And chances are that AVR just was never up to the task and potentially replacing it might help. But in this case, it is working. If there was no AVR at all, if it was just a bridge rectifier, I'd see a 20 volt swing between unloaded and fully loaded. In this case, we are seeing a swing of about 11 volts. So it's not doing a great job, but it is working. Anyway, I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.